Microsoft very much jumped into the custom data center, data center. Silicon game. <laughs> the joke there between Pat and I for everybody is uh, he rightly points out that I only think about data center and servers when I talk about Silicon. And Which, by the way, is good because guess what? Because that that's what you do, right? That's what I do. It's fun uh, stuff too. I find myself going in and editing uh, research or blogs, adding that <laughs> data center, data center edge, data center. But I uh, know stuff. So so, what do they do here? It's crazy. It's crazy. By the way, just before we start the the whole creepy vibe thing with yeah. Paul and I on here, it's bound to get weird and creepy at some point. So <laughs> yeah. I just want to throw that on there. Um, so two things, right? Um, first, Maya, uh, custom, obviously custom, Microsoft built ASIC for AI uh, and Cobalt, uh, an ARM-based CPU. So getting into both of these, you know, everybody knows Azure is obviously a huge cloud provider, has invested a lot um, in promoting, uh, or not promoting, but enabling AI for enterprises. The work they've done hosting uh, OpenAI and uh, a lot of other work. Um, is just it's absolutely incredible so you know they um and while they partner with with all of the major players um lo and behold uh they announced at ignite first day of ignite that uh they've created the, or they've designed and built this this asic this ai asic known as maya um what do we know about it so they didn't give any performance numbers what we know um is that it's built on open standards there is a, a body with an open compute that virtually every player is part of NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, Qualcomm, Meta, um, around how you build, uh, design your hardware to better support the AI frameworks that are out there. And, uh, and Maya was built to those specs. That's a good thing. So embracing openness, which we all love. Um, we also know that you can fit four of these onto a, a server motherboard. Uh, and you know, while we haven't seen performance, performance numbers, it's clear that this is, you know, they're positioning this as um, as that enabler, just like the H100 is, just like the MI300 is of of Gen AI and and other AI workloads. Um, we forget there are other AI workloads out there. Um, what I found really really interesting about this two things. The first is um, the first is that they uh, as as Microsoft did this, they actually kind of went down this path of when you think about sustainability and how you power these things and cool them, they actually built their only their own liquid cooling method or method or or product to go along with it called Sidekicks, um, which I thought was really fascinating. Um, that's the first part. The second part is, you know, they took this they took this approach with Maya that um, I, I absolutely embrace, which is if you're really going to provide the best absolute performance for your AI stacks to the to the marketplace. You got to customize it from the ground up, right? You've got to have that fully enabled platform from silicon all the way up through the stack to provide what it, what you can do for best uh, best uh, performance and perform performance per dollar. And that's how they measured uh, their development of Maya. So I, I really, I think it's a I think it's a great move. Um, you know, they still partner with Nvidia. They still partner with AMD. I'm sure they'll partner with Intel at some point. But um, clearly, uh, they have they have big plans for that. Part for Maya. Part two, Cobalt. Crazy, right? 128, 128 core part based on Neoverse V2. They built it on ARM CSS, which is a big deal because it allowed them to get this this product out very quickly. Um, you know, they position this as supporting their 1P platforms. So um, in press releases, they've mentioned that they're supporting Teams and Azure SQL. Um, and other, they say other 1P workloads. <clears throat> this is interesting for a couple of reasons. One, um, you know, this was a uh, this was a uh, uh, a part that they or ARM was a, a strategy that they first in, embraced a long time ago. Worked with Ampere to to deliver the uh, the older Ampere part um, in production. I guess in 2022, uh, mid 2022, uh, and they've also embraced AMD one socket part um, to um, to power their their uh, one one socket VM, their kind of scale up VMs as well. So I'm kind of curious, not just from an Ampere perspective, but from a overall perspective, how much Cobalt eats into um, the suppliers that have been supporting these Azure general compute instances for a long time. So I talked for a long time 
Sorry, Pat, I know you get a lot of thoughts on it. No, listen, we could we could spend an hour on this thing. I mean, I have publicly viewed uh, Microsoft's lack of compute and AI custom silicon as a potential liability moving forward, either on supply chain resilience or on cost. And when you get to a certain amount of scale, and if you look at the amount of IP you can pull off the shelf, uh, the quality of the tools and the IP that has been certified all the way down to the foundry, uh, you aren't spending a billion and a half dollars on a, on a custom piece of silicon uh, like I did in the old days. And uh, this was a, a good first step. And I was very surprised that it all came out. And, you know, my vernacular was it was all shock and awe. Right. Like, I mean, hitting literally uh, hitting literally all at once. Uh, one thing I was struck by, and I'm wondering how the industry got stealth, is they literally said, we designed the IP, the custom IP that they had. Uh, they obviously, they, they leveraged third-party IP like uh, Neoverse N2, mm -hmm. uh, but they, they taped it out. Uh, so all the way from design to tape out to validation <laughs> and taking into the fab, and there was maybe one leak. Right. Right. On the information. Yes. And and I am just I am just dumbfounded. And what happened and what I've what I've seen is that people didn't move their LinkedIn's over uh, and they didn't move their their Twitter or X handles over because, yeah. you know, one guy got up and said, hey, I'm, I, I could finally talk about what I've been working on for three years. <laughs> it doesn't even say Microsoft. Yeah, it was it was his prior company. Yeah. Uh, so uh, big job. Uh, uh, stelting that I am I did see some of the performance data that did not go public and uh, it, it was very positive what I do want to see is I do want to see uh, the new custom silicon compared against AMD Intel AWS and Google Cloud yeah. um, and and by the way <laughs> I don't think it has to trounce it I think even if it's close, it's uh, it's competitive, and if they manage their costs, they're not paying uh, an arm uh, uh, and a leg. Uh, I also want to see pricing uh, for the custom uh, parts and pricing for the AMD MI 300X. Which, by the way, kudos to AMD; they got their first uh, CSP to uh, embrace it. Uh, I also want to know when the dates are going to be for full IaaS, meaning ever, anything on Azure, like Graviton today, any customer in AWS can hit, can can light those up, right? That is not the case uh, with uh, Azure yet. I also would like to see the day that they support M365, Dynamics 365, uh, and I'd like the official GA dates. I like the way they're rolling it out, which is primarily uh, to support their SaaS services. Uh, that This is what happened. Um, this is what Google did with the TPU. The first three versions were really internal only. Google Search, Google Photos, uh, stuff uh, like that. I, I, I don't think it's going to take three years. In fact, uh, this uh, Maya supports the Open Azure AI service, which is fundamentally the ability to uh, light up, uh, light up, uh, light up stuff there. Yeah. So congratulations to Microsoft. I think it's a really a uh, solid start. And I definitely am looking at their capabilities in a, a different uh, way uh, today.